Today, we're taking a look at the FN 509 Tactical. Thanks for watching Peace Loving Guns. Today, we've got a very special treat for you. This is the FN 509 Tactical. And you actually get a very nice looking nylon range bag, which is kind of cool because a lot of guns tend to come with these plastic cases that you wind up collecting and never using for anything. Optics are guilty of this too. This is something that you would foreseeably actually use to carry this back and forth to the range. This is what comes in this nice FN branded case. You've got the gun. Granted, this one has a modification to it. This is a Trigicon RMR. The FN 509 Tactical does not come with this. This is a custom modification. This is uh, another gun that's being lent to us by the same gentleman that allowed us to shoot the SP5K by HK. This gun comes with three magazines. One is a standard capacity 17 round. And then it comes with two of these beautiful Extendo stick mags that hold 24. That's pretty fantastic. Um, the gun comes in this nice flat dark earth coloration. And uh, just take a look at it here. So if you want. The gun comes with a manual, which is always good to thumb through. A quick setup and instruction sheet. So, so the gun comes with uh, several different um, adapter so that you can mount different types of pistol sights to it or rather pistol optics to it. So it comes with a separate reduced power recoil spring. The silver is optimized for duty self-defense and other standard power ammunition as well as shooting standard and lower power ammunition with a suppressor. The silver recoil spring will function with most ammunition however if your ammunition fails to cycle the slide please follow the instruction in the owner's manual and install the yellow reduced power spring. So it's for ammunition that is slightly less powerful. I could see competition shooters using that. People that are reloading and trying to skimp on a little bit of powder so that they can shoot the gun but not do so much with terminal ballistics and whatnot. Now we have an aftermarket ziplock with the adapters for the optics uh, mounting system on this. Um, the stock configuration of this gun actually has this really neat housing for the rear sight. It's worth taking a look at. So your rear sight would sit in between these wings here and be protected from bumps. And it would just kind of sit right there like that. I think it's rather sharp looking. And uh, if you're not gonna put optics on it, uh, it might behoove you to leave that on there. You can also confirm your FN purchase online and you get a free gun lock that makes it useful in the instance of you having to use it. So that's cool. You can just throw that away. It also comes with a separate back strap that changes it from a kind of contoured um, curved back strap with a, a little bit of a swell there to a flat back strap. Uh, this gun is very, very similar in design to the FNS, uh, which I am a proud owner of and have got a lot of trigger time on. They've done some things that kind of refine the design. This was in the the trials for the Army's new sidearm and it lost out to the SIG P320 which then was redesignated for the US Army the M17. Um, comes in this nice flat dark earth colored. They change a little bit on the ergonomics from the FNS. It's got a really nice uh, kind of tractionable grip surface here and on the front it's not too aggressive if you grip it without gloves but it would still be grippy with gloves on. Um, my preference is to have the curved back strap on these guys. It's got a Picatinny rail for mounting lights and lasers. They did a little bit with the aesthetics of this. The FNS has a little bit more angular aesthetics to it, uh, kind of the side rail stick out. They made this very slightly more narrow or at least they made it feel more narrow and kind of streamlined. Front and rear cocking serrations are nice. You've got very tall suppressor height sights that are also night sights from the factory. We mentioned that it comes with the 
uh, the rear sight wing that protects the sight. The barrel is of course threaded so that you can add a suppressor if you are into that sort of fun stuff. The trigger is very much like the FNS9. It's a double action only striker fired gun. Uh, for me, the trigger feels pretty good. I rather like it kind of better than a Glock trigger. It's got a nice flat face. It's a smooth trigger. It has a, uh, a kind of a, a mushy take up, but it goes up against a wall. And then at that point, just a little bit more and the gun, the gun breaks over. So we're going to shoot this and kind of give our shooting impressions on it. Takedown is very much like a lot of the automatic pistols of this era. You lock the slide to the rear, make sure that the magazine is out, that there's no ammunition in the bore, or in the chamber rather. Flip the little disassembly lever down, let the slide ride home, and then this gun does require that the trigger be pulled. So pull the trigger and then you can slide the whole assembly off the top of the gun. Um, that lets you get at the internal components and then lubricate very lightly the pieces that need that. There we go. And that's disassembly. So obviously we've been doing uh, quite a bit of comparison between the FN509 tactical and the FNS9. That's because they are pretty similar. That said, there are some uh, notable differences. If you are already an FN fanboy or you own an FNS already, or you own this already and you're thinking about getting this because you can get this at a much cheaper price right now, the, there is a consideration and that is that the mags are not interchangeable. So that's not something you can do. We can compare these two and show kind of some of these differences. They are essentially the same size frame. They've made some slight differences. The grip doesn't have on the 509, it does not have the same kind of bevel that the FNS has. This is of course so the uh, military operator types have a little bit of a thumb hole right there so they can kind of extract those mags. That was kind of a concern for, for those guys. The 509 has also lost these rails that the FNS has. I think this looks rather handsome. That's my personal mileage. The, uh, they of course changed the front and rear back straps somewhat. Slide serrations, not back straps. The triggers look very, very similar. They feel very similar. I've done some shooting on another 509. In my experience, it was very slightly better. Uh, I felt like I could get hits a little bit easier. They've uh, changed the magazine release. Instead of you having this ambidextrous kind of, you've got these uh, kind of knurling right here, or these serrations, where you your thumb can kind of get at it when you're pressing down on it. But there's nothing on the back side. They kind of went to this flat, really kind of aggressive knurling right here. Either way, both of these feel pretty good. And something that's notable about these mag releases, and I think the industry should pick up on this and do more of this, the mag releases are completely ambidextrous. They push in from either side, and unlike some of the other mag releases that do this, uh, XDM <coughs> or XD as well, when you push those in, they rotate, and if you kind of push them hard, or they're kind of grippy, or you have an extended one that's knurled, you're, when you're pushing that in, you're also resisting that rotation. So this is an excellent design for the magazine release. And you can see this is actually how it uh, retains the magazine with that release. So it's cool how they figured that out to be the same experience for left and right-handed shooters. The 509 and the FNS are both um, able to have a safety mounted on the side. Uh, when I purchased mine, this was the only version I was able to get. So mine has a safety. It's got a battery of arms very similar to a 1911, where in, when you shoot, you bring this thumb down and it's ready to go. I carried a 1911 for several years. So that is a battery of arms that I'm familiar with, comfortable with, 
have trained with, most importantly, and that works for me. I think that this is a more ideal system where you have this nice double action trigger that's a striker fired gun. It's got safeties in it very much like a Glock. You could hit this with a sledgehammer and the gun's not gonna go off. Drop it off of a building for sure and it does not go off. They both have, they both come with a, an adjustable backstrap. This was my personal modification because I felt this was a little aggressive and this feels a lot better. I just haven't finished it out and made it look pretty yet. But um, this is definitely a little bit better take on the backstrap FM 509, first shots. So those first five or six shots were just using the iron sights, looking through the RMR, not using the chevron at all. I have to say, I am not a fan of this optic. If you're trying to use the iron sights, granted they're back up at that point, but I'm trying to use the iron sights and all I see is a, what is it, a 5 MOA triangle, 5 MOA amber, amber triangle just dancing around on the target. It's pretty distracting. The way it's set up is uh, we need to move the triangle down. Yeah. So first shots, uh, issues with the Trejacon RMR aside, the recoil felt very similar to the FNS9. The trigger I think feels just a little bit better. And granted, I like the FNS9's trigger. This feels a little bit smoother. Um, now that we have the point of aim, point of impact kind of issue kind of worked out with the RMR, I'm going to start using that just to see how that feels with this, since this is an optic ready platform. That was not even on the paper. Cool. You stacked that third one. Awesome. What's happening there? Did it lock open? Good. Yeah, I'm good. Because when I was shooting, it didn't lock open. So my FNS at this point was having malfunctions every 20 or so rounds. I had to actually lock the slide back and leave it locked back for a couple evenings before it suppled up a little bit. It's been perfect ever since. Yeah, that's what I was having happen the other day. You think it's the aluminum cases? No, I think it's just breaking, like you said. Probably breaking, so. but it is failing to. It's failing to go into battery, so. Failing to feed. Yeah, so it's probably not blowing back strong enough. It's probably that same tight spring issue, which is probably why they are shipping these with a softer spring as well. I don't know. I like the 24 round magazine. If it'd cycle it. What? If it'd cycle them. Yeah, true. <laughs> Left side.
All right, that's a lot of ammo in one magazine. So, feels good, I like it. Clearly I have a, a left bias going on right now. Probably has to do with the fact that the optic we're using is not fully sighted in, but hey, um, yeah. And uh, obviously I, I don't have the nerves to shoot any better than I did, so that's what we got. Okay. Come to me, child. Come to me. Here you go. All right, I'm just going to shoot some rounds, y'all. I'm going to go pew pew some. I'm going to go pew pew some. That's how we do up a cheer. Here we go. Whatever, bro. I feel like a laser is like cheating. Well, it's not a laser, strictly speaking, but... Or whatever it is. It's an optic sight. Optic cheaters. Is there a holographic? What's cool? Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I've seen the way you shoot. That frame gets toasty right there. Properly toasty. I say personally, I'm not that big a fan. It works fine, and I can recommend it all day. But personally, it's just not personally, for me. I'm not very fond of the Trigicon RMR. But that's my mileage. It might be different if we were shooting like uh, shooting. We weren't trying to bullseye shoot, and we were just trying to rapidly hit these targets. Step back and to your left. And to, to the left. left. There you go. I really, really like an RMR. I like it a lot. No, oh yeah. No magazine. So this RMR is dual illuminated. Can you see it well in here? Is it good? Um, these fiber optic uh, threads gather light from any source. Um, and then there's also an integrated tritium vial, like on these night sights here. They actually glow in the dark on their own. 
I don't know if you can see it's the really triangle. Um, let's see if you can get that on camera because it's really cool. So it's dual illuminated, it's always going to work, and it never needs batteries. Just interpose a fucking triangle on there, you'll be fine. Look at it, just paste the fucking... God damn it. This is a quick change, my boy. Three hours later. <laughs> Maybe get him over here. It's natural. It's natural, boy. Use all your viewers. <laughs> I've had better, but not many. <laughs> FN 509 Tactical. It's fun. And uh, it's tactical. What else can you say? Cool. So, FN 509 Tactical. Uh, overall, pretty cool gun. I'm sure it comes at a pretty price point. Uh, things that I like about it. Ambidextrous magazine release that presses in from both sides and is the same experience on both sides. Press in with either of your thumbs. Uh, your slide lock or slide release lever is the same experience on both sides. Fully ambidextrous there. This particular model does not have a safety. Rather, it does not have a toggle safety on it. It has multiple redundant internal safeties. I rather like this setup. However, if you should have the one that has the toggle safety that has the battery of arms like a 1911, that is pretty cool too. Suppressor sights, tritium night sights in them. That's pretty awesome if you're gonna run a suppressor. If not, uh, sights lower to the bore would be better. But if you're gonna be tactical, you gotta have suppressor night sights and a suppressor and possibly an RMR. This, I could see where this would be faster. This isn't my preference for a pistol optic. It's kind of coarse and it is kind of distracting. The triangle takes up a huge portion of the inside of this and it bouncing around is kind of distracting. Also the parallax is kind of annoying and it distorting the image beyond the weapon is kind of obnoxious. So that's not my favorite weapon sight. Granted it doesn't come with the gun so that's kind of a moot point. This gun is optics ready which is awesome. It comes with the plates that are removable and uh, yeah, that is the FN 509 Tactical. The trigger is pretty good. It pews the pew pew. You could do much worse for a trigger, yeah. And it does do the pew 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 pew. Uh, it's a handsome looking gun and the ergonomics are pretty, pretty top notch. We'd like to take a moment to thank the generous donor that's letting us take his gun out and shoot it for the first time. He hasn't even seen this yet, and here we are breaking it in for him. We want to thank you for watching, and make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those things help us out tremendously. We want to keep providing glorious, fun gun content for you guys back at home. And, of course, we want to keep shooting because it's a lot of fun. It's a pistol, man. It's a pistol. It's a good pistol. It's good. If you like it, go buy it. We want to thank Gray Fox Ranch for letting us come out and shoot their dirt again, because we always like that. So if you're ever in the need for any gated horses, donkeys, or mules... Please. We don't do donkeys and mules anymore. You're so if you're ever in luck. the need for any gated <laughs> horses, or horses, or horse training, 
or you want to ride a pony go. or look at a mini horse, you can come out to Gray Fox Ranch because they have all that. They got all that bad <laughs> Yeah, boy. You might also check out Gray Fox Gunsmithing for your gunsmithing needs and uh, firearms transfers and all that kind of groovy stuff. And while you're at it, let him uh, borrow it so that Peace Love and Guns can come out and shoot it on camera for you. William, where are you located? It's in the links that weren't put up in the last video. Don't forget the links. <laughs> I want to thank Gray Fox Ranch and Gray Fox Gunsmithing for letting us come out here and shoot their dirt today. We always appreciate them letting us come out here, even if they make my brother and my best friend come out and uh, buck hay for them. But that's cool. I didn't have to do it because my wrist hurts right now. So that's good. Thanks, Show us guys. your tactical reload again. Ow! Ow! <laughs> ow, ow. The links for all of this fun stuff will be down in the doobly-doo below. Thanks for watching.